the first wife, Joan of France. Joan of Valois, who was also known as Joan of France, was born on April 23, 1464. She was the youngest daughter of King Louis XI of France and Charlotte of Savoie, and was predestined at a very early age to marry the Duke Louis of Orléans. Joan was very sickly and somewhat hunched-backed, a trait she inherited from her father Louis XI. Louis and Joan married on September 8, 1476, but the marriage was a failure. Joan received no affection from her husband, who neglected her. It is claimed that her cynical father, who was aware of her fragility and in the firm belief that she was infertile, married her off to Louis with the sole intention of making the House of Orléans extinct, thus inheriting their possessions. Despite the lack of affection she received from her husband, Joan undertook several attempts to secure his release after Louis was defeated and imprisoned at Bourges by her older sister, the regent Anne of Beaujeu. She obtained his release in 1491 thanks to a decision by her brother, King Charles VIII of France. However, after living together for a short period, her husband abandoned her again. When Louis of Orléans became the King of France after the tragic death of Charles VIII on April 7, 1498, Joan had to learn through rumors that her husband had been crowned king at Reims Cathedral on May 27 of that year. Soon after, he asked her permission to annul their marriage, as he wanted to remarry Anne of Brittany. Joan categorically refused to grant her consent. A trial followed, during which she was subjected to a humiliating examination as they wanted to prove her infertility. In the end, the Borgia Pope Alexander VI dissolved the marriage. After her divorce, the unfortunate Joan, who was supposed to be Queen of France, retreated to Bourges, where she founded the monastic order of the Annunciate Sisters. The statutes of this order were ratified by the aforementioned Alexander VI in 1501 and then again by his successor, Pope Leo X, in 1517. Joan of Valois finally died at the age of 40 in Bourges. She was beatified by Pope Benedict XIV in 1743 and then also canonized by Pope Pius XII on May 28, 1950. The second wife, Anne of Brittany. Anne of Brittany was born on January 25, 1477 in Nantes. She was the eldest daughter of Duke Francis II of Brittany and Margaret of Foix. The succession to the throne of Brittany was complicated at the time. The duchy had a female right of succession, which enabled Anne to succeed her father. However, under the First Treaty of Guérande of 1365, it was agreed that if the main branch of the dynasty lacked male heirs, the right of inheritance would pass to Joan of Pontièvre and, in 1480, the Pontièvre branch sold the right of inheritance to the King of France, leaving Brittany at risk of being incorporated into France upon the moment of the death of Francis II. Therefore, in February 1486, Francis II publicly proclaimed his daughter Anne as his heir. From an early age, Anne was subjected to a series of political marriage proposals and betrothals aimed at securing her hereditary rights against France. Her father took part in the so-called Gallic War against the French crown and was forced to agree in the Peace Treaty of Sablé that his daughters would only be allowed to marry with the permission of the French king. The 11-year-old Anne became the reigning Duchess of the Duchy of Brittany when her father died in September 1488. Furthermore, she became Countess of Nantes, Montfort and Richemont and Viscountess of Limoges. On his deathbed, her father appointed Marshal Rieux as her guardian. Anne was crowned Duchess of Rennes on February 10, 1489 and married the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I on December 19, 1490 at the age of 13. The marriage had been arranged to protect Brittany from France with the help of the Emperor's Habsburg dynasty 
and its allies Castile and England, but could not fulfill its purpose due to the political situation at the time. The Emperor's Habsburg dynasty was too busy in Hungary at the time to concern itself with Brittany, and England and Castile were not prepared for battle with France. The marriage between Anne and Maximilian was deeply resented by France, as Anne had not asked for permission for it, as agreed upon in the Treaty of Sablé. Also, France did not want to see its enemy, the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I, installed as co-regent in Brittany. The marriage therefore resulted in a French attack on Brittany, and in the spring of 1491, French troops surrounded and besieged Brittany's capital, Rennes. On November 15, the French marched into Rennes, and Anne was forced to sign the Treaty of Rennes. Two days later, she was forced to agree to marry King Charles VIII of France, whom she married in a quick and simple ceremony in Langeais. Under the terms of the marriage contract signed in France, if Charles VIII died without sons, Anne would have to marry his successor, thus giving France the chance to annex the duchy. On February 8, 1492, Anne was crowned Queen of France at Saint-Denis, and on February 15, the marriage between Anne and Charles VIII was legalized by the Pope, who, in return for a large sum of money, annulled Anne's first marriage. The marriage between Charles and Anne was unhappy and the relationship between the couple was poor. Charles VIII forbade Anne to use the title of Duchess of Brittany and excluded her from playing a political role in both Brittany and France. When Charles went off to war, he appointed his sister, Anne de Beaujeu, as his regent rather than his wife. Although Anne insisted on separate bedrooms, she was constantly pregnant and was often prevented from seeing her children. None of the children born from the union, however, survived infancy. On April 4, 1498, Charles VIII died and was succeeded by his cousin and brother-in-law, Louis XII of France, leaving Anne a childless widow at the age of 21. Under the terms of the marriage contract, which came into effect three days after her husband's death, she was to marry her husband's successor, but he was already married to Joan of France. Louis XII immediately petitioned for the annulment of his marriage, and when the divorce was finalized, Anne was forced to fulfill the terms of her first marriage contract, and she had to marry France's new king. On November 18, 1504, she was crowned Queen of France a second time. The union produced two daughters, but no sons. Those daughters are Claude and René of France. During her second reign as Queen of France, Anne lived mainly in the Chateau of Blois. This time she put emphasis on her independent status as Duchess of Brittany during her time as Queen. She kept informed of Britain affairs, had a tomb erected for her parents, and vigorously defended the rights of Brittany against the French crown and her husband, the king. In 1501, she arranged an engagement between her daughter Claude, who was heir to the throne of Brittany, and the Holy Roman Emperor-to-be Charles V, to secure Brittany's independence from France. However, when it became likely that Anne would never have a son and Brittany would thus be inherited by her daughter and lost to France, which had no female right of inheritance, Louis XII broke off the betrothal and instead arranged an engagement between Claude and the French heir to the throne, François. Until her death, Anne refused to accept this betrothal. As time progressed, Anne's health weakened due to a series of pregnancies and miscarriages. Upon Anne's death on January 9, 1514, the Duchy of Brittany was inherited by her daughter Claude, who was by then married to François, the heir to the throne of France. Anne was buried in the crypt of the Basilique of Saint-Denis. Her funeral, which lasted for 40 days, was to become the example followed for funerals for all French queens until the French Revolution. The third and last wife, Mary Tudor. Mary Rose Tudor was born on March 18, 1496. She was the daughter of Henry VII of England and Elizabeth of York. 
Mary was betrothed to the later Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, who was related to Catherine of Aragon through his mother. However, in 1513, Mary's brother, Henry VIII, annulled the betrothal and instead he chose King Louis XII of France as a husband for Mary. Louis, who was 34 years older than Mary Rose and who was described to be a weak and old man, was considered to be very unappealing to the young and beautiful princess. Louis was a widower with no heir and Henry wanted a union with his sister as a guarantee of truce with France. The wedding took place on October 9, 1514, but the marriage did not last long as Louis died on January 1, 1515. Mary was probably already in love with Charles Branson, the first Duke of Suffolk, when she married Louis. Brandon wasn't of royal birth, but Mary had made an agreement with her brother Henry that she would agree to marry Louis, but if she outlived him, she would choose her own next husband. After the death of Louis, the Dowager Queen Mary moved to the Palais de Cluny, where she was kept isolated from all men except the new King François I for six weeks to see if she was pregnant with the dead king's child, and, if so, to ensure it was his. This gave Mary time to make plans for her future. She knew that Charles Brandon would be among those to escort her back to England, and she had heard rumors that her brother Henry was planning to marry her off to a Spanish royal. In the small chapel at the Palais de Cluny, Mary persuaded Brandon to let go of the promise he had made to Henry VIII not to propose to her, and Brandon and Mary were married on March 3, 1515, with François I of France among the witnesses. When Henry found out, he was furious, but Mary was his favorite sister and Charles an old friend, so the couple escaped with a large fine and Charles avoided further punishment. During her life, Mary was always referred to as the French Queen and never as the Duchess of Suffolk, perhaps to remind her that she married beneath her station. Mary lived essentially quietly and contentedly for the rest of her life. She was good friends with her sister-in-law Catherine of Aragon and supported Catherine when Henry VIII wanted that marriage dissolved in order to marry Catherine's lady-in-waiting Anne Boleyn, whom Mary disliked very much. Mary's health began to fail in 1533 and she died on June 25 of that same year. She was buried in St. Mary's Church in Suffolk. Thank you for watching.